Wing is an oil painting on canvas. It measures 81 by 64.2 centimeters. It was created in the Rococo style, which is known for its decoration, forms, and playful subject matter. The painting features a complex composition with multiple figures arranged in a triangular composition. The use of light and shadow as well as vibrant colors add to the painting's sense of movement. It is a painting by the French Rococo artist Jean Hurd Fonrud. It is known for its playful and romantic subject matter and it is considered to be one of the most iconic paintings of the Rococo period. The painting depicts a young woman on a swing being pushed by a man hidden in the bushes. The painting is known for its luscious colors, its details, and playful tone. It is often interpreted as a commentary on the virility and decadence of the French aristocracy in the 18th century. Inga Shanaber is a British Nigerian artist living in the United Kingdom. His works explore cultural identity, colonialism, and post-colonialism within the contemporary context of globalization. A significance of his art is the brightly colored Ankara fabric he uses. He is known for his installation pieces, creating 3D mannequins in different fabrics from different cultures. Installation artworks, sometimes called environments, can take up an entire room or gallery space requiring the viewer to go through it in order to interact completely with the piece of art. However, some works are only meant to be walked through and thought about, or they are so delicate that they can only be seen from a doorway or one end of a room. Installation art is distinct from sculpture and other traditional art forms because it is a cohesive whole rather than a collection of discrete individual pieces of art. Shanaber's works include women shooting cherry blossoms, the pursuit, and how does a girl like you get to be a girl like you? The goal of Shanaber's exhibition uh, was to demonstrate the spiritual and societal significance of African aesthetics. Without erasing the traces of abstract and literal connections with Western influences, he constructed a stylized collection of works for which he strove to establish a historical discourse. Similar works to The Swing after Fragonard are The Swing by Jean Honor Fragonard and Tete a Tete from Marriage et la Mode by William Hogarth. Both of these works are paintings featuring oil on canvas and were done in the 1700s. They are both part of the Rococo period. Of course, The Swing after Fragonard is a recreation of The Swing by Fragonard, so they are easily similar. They both feature a girl on a swing dressed in typical 18th century clothing. Both have themes of playfulness, with the girl kicking her shoe off and kicking her foot up, showing up her dress. The swing after Fragonard is similar to Tete a Tete from Marriage et la Mode by William Hogarth, also featuring 18th century clothing. They also both go off of the playful and sensual theme. The woman in Tete a Tete has the playful smirk on her face and an untied bonnet showing she's cheating on her husband, just like the girl in the swing kicks her shoe off and shows up her dress. Our next work is titled Horn Players. For the identifiers, the artist is Jean-Michel Basquiat. The location is New York. The medium is acrylic and oil stick on three canvases panels mounted on wood supports. The year is 1983. Horn Players, a painting by Jean-Michel Basquiat, demonstrates all the key artistic elements we have come to recognize in this free-owned American artist. On the left and right panels of this triptych, in addition to the half-length portraits, the artist has added additional drawings and words, many of which Basquiat created and then crossed out. On each panel, there are also enormous expanses of white paint that appear to both emphasize the black backdrop and hide the design or text that are underneath. The artist has soon repeated phrases like dizzy, ornithology, pre, and teeth throughout all three of the panels of this piece, which is arguably most noticeable. The main subjects of horn players are two famous jazz musicians, the saxophonist Charlie Parker and the trumpeter Dizzy Gillespie. Parker is seen on the left side of the painting, clutching a saxophone that is produce, producing distorted sound waves 
and a number of hot pink musical notes. In the right panel, Dizzy Gillespie may be seen with a quiet instrument next to his body. The figure's head has the words Do Shu Di Obi floating to the left of it, which reminds one of the scat where this improvised singing Gillespie does sometimes did on stage. The central panel of Basquiat's canvas, which does not show a portrait of an identical musician like the other uh, like the other two panels, but instead a distorted head with roughly outlined features. Horn Players is a painting by the American artist Jean Michel created in 1983. The painting is known for its vibrant colors, bold lines, and an genetic composition. It depicts two figures, both of, both of them whom play horns and surrounded by a variety of abstract and figurative elements. The painting, the painting is executed in a style that combines elements of graffiti, neo-expressivism. It is large in scale, measuring 213.4 by 213.4 centimeters and is painted on a canvas using acrylic, oil stick, and spray paint. The use of bright colors, bold lines, and energetic composition are all hallmarks of his style and are evident in many of his other works as well. As with many contemporary artworks, the function of his horn players is open to interpretation. However, the painting is often seen as a commentary on issues related to race, identity, and culture, and as a celebration of African American music and culture in particular. The use of horns as a motif in the painting is thought to reflect the importance of jazz and other forms of African American music in the cultural history of the United States. The painting is also admired for its technical skill and innovative use of materials which combine to create a bold and expressive work that is both visually striking and engaging. Jean-Michel Basquiat was an American artist who rose to success during the 1980s as part of the neo-expressionism movement. As a member of the graffiti duo Samo in the late 1970s when rap punk, and street art came together to form the foundation of early hip-hop music culture, Basquiat first rose to recognition for his cryptic epigrams. His works were on display in galleries and museums all over the world by the start of the 1980s. Some of his works include Untitled and In Italian. Untitled is a painting created by American artist Jean-Michel Basquiat in 1981. An X-ray-like vision of the head's exposed upper and lower jaw accounts for its misinterpretation as a skull. The painting was acquired by Eli and Edith Broad in 1982 and now is housed at the Broad Museum in Los Angeles. The artwork references ancient Egypt and southern United States culture to critique the Western society's understanding of history and its forgetfulness towards slavery. Done in 1983, in Italian uses a collection of symbols that Jean-Michel loved using in several of his works. However, the genesis of the word in Italian is not drawn in this painting. Jean-Michel only, only used one Italian word, saying, which means blood. However, he closes the Italian word saying out and replaces it with the word sangre. Improvisation 28 and The Migration of the Negro are similar works to horn players. Improvisation 28 by Vasily Kandinsky shows a lot of abstract colors and loose brushstrokes. When first looking at it, the viewer is supposed to interpret the painting differently by seeing different objects and shapes. This is similar to horn players because when first shown to the audience, everyone interprets it differently. You see a bunch of different words and cross outs. There are also two people shown who are drawn differently. Both use paint on canvas. The Migration of the Negro, done by Jacob Lawrence, which depicts the migration of African Americans to the northern United States from the south that began in the 1910s. Just like this work, Horn Players depicts a tribute to two of the most influential jazz musicians of the 20th century, Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker. 
Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker were to music what Basquiat uh, was to com contemporary painting, so it only makes sense that he would, would honor them in one of his artworks. Both works show the progress African Americans have made in history, both in spreading geographically and in the influence they have had on music. Our final work is titled Praying Mantra. For the identifiers, the artist is Wingeki Mutu, location, Nairobi, Kenya, medium, mixed media on Mylar, the year 2006. A female creature looks to be lounging on a blanket with a geometric design that is spread between trees or possibly on a tree limb in Mutu's praying mantra. The blanket mimics traditional Cuba cloth, which was made by the Cuba tribe. The lady stands with her legs crossed in front of her and her right hand, seen, right hand behind her cone-shaped crown head, gazing suggestively at the observer. Her skin seems dappled by sunshine and reflects the hues of the tree's leaves, masking her comfortable stance. Similar to the feminine figure, the tree represents creation tales that are common to many cultures, including those of Mutu's Kenyan Kaikuyu ancestors. The woman has a green serpent in her left hand and is lying on the blanket that makes up for the majority of the composition. The snake serves as another cultural touchstone for Mutu's protagonist because of its connections to Eve's place in the biblical creation story. The female figure is encircled by the tree, strengthening the connections between fact and fiction, African and non-African cultural beliefs, and natural versus supernatural events. Praying Mantra centers on female subjectivity, exoticism, and notions of hybridity, both in concept and imagery. Wagenki Mutu is a contemporary artist from Kenya who works in a variety of media, including painting, sculpture, and collage. One of her most well-known works is a series of collages called Praying Mantra which she created in 2006. Each collage features a female figure, often with animalistic features, surrounded by a variety of abstract and figurative elements. The collages are layered and complex, combining a range of visual motifs and cultural references. The works are known for their ex exploration of themes related to gender, race, identity and for the use of surreal and fantastical imagery. In her left hand, the figure holds a green sarpan that rests on the blanket which feels much of a scene. The figure stares suggestively at the viewer with her right hand positioned behind her head. The collages are typically quite large, measuring several feet in height and width. As with many contemporary artworks, the function of Wagenti's Mutu's Prey Mantera series is open to interpretation. However, the works are often seen as contemporary on issues related to gender, race, and identity. And it is a critique of the ways in which these issues are addressed in contemporary society. The figure is questioning how we see gender, sexuality, and cultural identity. The use of surreal and fantastical imagery in the collages is thought to reflect the complexity and of these issues to challenge viewers to think more deeply about them. The works are also admired for their technical skill and innovative use of collage as a medium. Mutu creates a natural, even primitive, fictional environment that entices and disturb us even as she invites us to explore stereotypes about the African female body as explicitly sexual, dangerous, and aesthetically deformed in re relation to Western standards. Using the medium of collage, the artist Wengeki Mutu creates new worlds that reimagine culture through the realm of fantasy. Mutu was born in Nairobi, Kenya, and educated in Europe and the United States. Her art is global in nature and clearly relishes complicating both Western and non-Western cultural norms. 
questioning how we see gender, sexuality, and even cultural identity. Her images incorporate the female body, specifically an imagined African body, subjected to sexism and racism on a global scale. Some of her works include Misguided Little Unforgivable Hierarchies, The Evolution of Mud Mama from Beginning to Start, and Dirty Water. Nudu is best known for spectacular and provocative collages depicting female figures, part human, animal, plant, and machine, in fantastical landscapes that are simultaneously unnerving and alluring, defying easy categorization and identification. Bringing her interconnected ecosystems to life for this exhibition through sculptural installations and videos, Mutu encourages audiences to consider these mythical worlds as places for cultural, psychological, and sociopolitical exploration and transformation. Holds a green snake. The figure reclines on a geometrically patterned blanket situated in a grove of blue trees. The blanket resembles the traditional Cuba fabric it, that comes from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Like many of Muchu's works, Praying Mantra has a dreamlike quality that encourages reflection. Now the title is supposed to be ambiguous. Praying, the way it's spelled is P-R-E-Y-I-N-G, and mantra, it's supposed to be considered a reference to the praying mantis insect. Like the figure in Mutu's work, a praying mantis has long powerful legs and during the mating season, the female praying mantis bites off her head, the head of her mate and devours his corpse for nourishment. Mutu's title thus invites us to view her central figure as an aggressive and potentially dangerous woman. The presence of a serpent in the left hand re reinforces this image while also serving as a reference to the biblical story of Adam and Eve. The central figure may be dangerous, but she could also be vulnerable. And Mutu's title reminds us that African women were preyed upon by European imperialists. The Europeans justified exploiting their African colonies and often repeated a mantra claiming that they had a white man's burden to civilize the illiterate and technologically backward Africans. The Kiss by Gustav Klimt, an illustration from the results of the first five-year plan by Varvara Stepanova, are similar to Praying Mantra. This Kiss is an oil-on-canvas painting with added gold leaf, silver, and platinum by the Austrian symbolist painter Gustav Klimt. It depicts a man and woman who come together as one by being wrapped in a gold type of halo. There are different patterns like black squares or florals in the clothing they wear. Similar to Praying Mantra, both works show multiple patterns like checkers, florals, or neon coloring. Illustration from the results of the first five-year plan is a photo montage that is an ode to the success of the first five-year plan, an initiative started by Stalin in 1928. The plan was a list of strategic goals designed to grow the Soviet economy and accelerate its industrialization. These goals included collective farming, creating a military and artillery industry, and increasing steel production. It is similar to Praying Mantra because Mutu was in influenced by artists like Stepanova with the photo montages she created. It influenced Mutu's works and Praying Mantra and made her become the successful artist she is today.